name is Rick West, and I'm at Brigham Young University in Provo, Utah. I'm an assistant professor there. I graduated from the University of Georgia, where I did participate in the original group from Dr. Reeves that put together that electronic performance support system. So um, my department is Instructional Psychology and Technology. Uh, we have a heavy design and development focus. And a lot of my personal research is in designing environments that promote collaborative innovation. And so I'm interested in things like studio-based approaches to teaching and learning. And I think that lends itself well to, um, to design-based research. I also teach the uh, technology course for pre-service teachers, which I've done some design-based research for. So I think the question was, what have I done with design-based research? So I have a class, a kind of a unique context. We're trying to teach technology to pre-service teachers, but we only have one credit to do it. And we have all majors in that class. And so it's a very challenging class to be able to teach something coherent to all those majors in one credit. And so it's forced me to explore out-of-the-box thinking in order to solve this pedagogical problem that I have. And so, and I also do a lot with online learning, so I've explored ways of using online tools to extend my ability to teach and serve these students. But the concern I have with online issues is, is losing contact with them, losing some of that interaction, some of that social community that I think is powerful for learning. So a lot of my design-based research has been on how to design interventions into the class that will extend the impact we're having while also minimizing the loss of community and the loss of social interaction that we're trying to have. And it involves in iterations where we'll try something, see if it's working, parts of it work, parts of it doesn't work, so then we'll take what works and extend it, try a new iteration, and we, we've been iterating like that for about four years now. I think design-based research is widely accepted in our field because we are kind of an instructional design community. I think it resonates with us that you can gain new knowledge not just through research but also through design and that by doing both together is really powerful. I think that resonates with nearly everyone in the field. That doesn't mean everyone in the field is doing it because I don't think we know well how to do it in an effective way. And so a lot of people, I think everyone believes it, but not everyone's able to do it. And we're struggling with how to actually do it. I see design-based research as a field, talking about that field, the community of people, as being kind of at the, the point where qualitative research was in the early 1980s. I'm, qualitative is more the methodology I use, although I use very, very a variety of methodologies. I gravitate more towards qualitative approaches. And you know, in the early 1980s, um, qualitative researchers were doing it, but they were struggling with, people were saying it wasn't rigorous, and they believed it was rigorous, but they couldn't explain to people what rigorous qualitative research was and what distinguished qualitative research from other approaches and things like that. I see design-based research as at being at that point right now and I'm waiting for us to have that kind of watershed moment. There's lots of us doing it, but, not, but we're not really sure what are the keys to doing it in a rigorous way, in an effective way, and how do we communicate it to other people. And I think, I'm hoping, that we're at the point where we're going to have that breakthrough. And once we do, just like qualitative research, I think it'll be kind of uh, a break in the dam, so to speak, and people will say, well, this thing that I believe in, now I know how to do it in a way that will communicate to my peers. And so they'll we'll help hopefully have a kind of a big outpour of this kind of research. So, and I actually teach a one-week unit in my class on design-based research, so I have to do that, teach brand new students how to, do instruct, um, how to think about design-based research. I think you always have to go back to that DBRC paper in Educational Research or the Design-Based Research Collective. I would read that, I would look at some of those special issues in educational technology, the Journal of Learning Sciences, educational psychologists, and then I do like going to that, and maybe I'm biased, but going to that EPSS that Dr. Weaver's research class put together and looking at some of the, um, there are things like the tutorial there, but I appreciate really much the videos that are there in terms of Dr. Barab and some of the other people saying, here's what it looks like on the ground, me actually doing it, here's what it looks like. Because I think it's one thing to conceptualize DBR theoretically, it's another thing to actually do it. And I think those are really helpful. Along those lines, I think what it really comes down to is students need to realize 
Well, students and novice DBR researchers need to understand this is a big thing. DBR is, by definition, bigger than traditional research. It cannot be easily done, perhaps, in one thesis. And so it's really good to get with a mentor who is doing design-based research as a trajectory, as an agenda, and, and collaborate with them on a piece of it while you're learning through participating and observing that kind of